Hey friends, welcome back to Kiki's Closet. Today is a big day. We're not only chatting with a musical theater legend, but with my 100th guest. Yes, 100 people have been here in Kiki's Closet. I can't believe it. Today's a big one. Let's start the show. Come on and come and play in Kiki's Closet today. Friends, today's guest is beyond my wildest dreams. I can't believe she's really here. You know her, you love her. Please help me welcome Laura Bell Bundy. Hey! Hi. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with me. It's an honor for me to have you as my 100th guest today. My first question, what color is your heart today? What color is my heart? <laughs> Pink. <laughs> You know, I, I I assume that would be the answer, but I I, I wanted to ask anyways. Uh, pink is my favorite color, so and it, it just it seems fitting with your career too that it's pink. Your new Paramount Plus show, The Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Odd, uh, Fairly Fairly Odd, help. Fairly, fairly Odd. It's hard to say. They shouldn't have added the that last part. They should have just said the new Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> They just dropped up Paramount Plus. It's so fun to see you on that show. You're dancing, you're twirling, you're doing it all, you're dressing up. What is it like jumping into the streaming world? It's still doing a television show, right? So for us, it's really no different except for every episode is dropped at the same time and not everybody has Paramount Plus. So you're like, hey, watch my show. <laughs> Download this new app that you don't have yet. And this is why you should download it because you can also watch Yellowstone. And Drag Race. Right, and Drag Race, there you go. You know, it's actually really funny because it was like featured during Pride Month on Fairmount Plus. Our show next to Drag Race, I'm like, are these the same audiences? I don't know. But, um, you know, we got fairies. I'm playing this one character, but because it's wish fulfillment, we can become like, suddenly we're in the world of Bridgerton, and then suddenly we're in like an action movie, and then I also play my mother on the show, which is like an old lady. And so I slip into her voice sometimes. So I get to like play these different characters and it's so fun. I never laugh so hard. And I, I gotta say, after the, the we, we say after the pandemic, but the reality is we're still in the middle of it and we're still sort of navigating it and it's a new normal, right? But uh, after the heaviness of the um, year that we had in 2020 and coming out coming into 2021 being able to work on a show where i laughed all the time and i was silly and just an idiot and that that was okay was so nice it to sort of remember that part of myself because everything felt so serious for like a year and i even think you know for all of us who are performers and i think many of us use performing as a type of therapy as a way to, you know, we are obviously expressing ourselves, but we're also expressing emotion that could be bottled up if we weren't expressing it in that way. And I think a lot of us were bottled up for like a year and a half with all kinds of emotions. And, you know, and when we're all alone by ourselves, everything is put into like, almost like a centrifuge and it comes out as this weird emotional messes. In honor of Pride Month, it only felt right to have one of the biggest musical theater gay icons of all time here. We know you're from Hairspray or Wicked, but I think everyone fell in love with you with your Tony Award nominated performance as Elle Woods in Legally Blonde. Looking back on the adventure that started 15 years ago, what are your fondest memories of playing Elle? You know, I gotta say, uh, I, I, I loved the entire process. I developed the show uh, for two years before we opened, and I think I grew up with her. I think Elle has this journey where she's a girl becoming a woman. And uh, and there's, you know, there's self-doubt and there's doubt from the outside. And then she believes in herself and she blossoms. And I think the same thing happened for me personally. And even throughout the show during the run of connecting more and more with her and uh, getting deeper with her. Uh, deeper emotionally in those in those spots where she's on you know she's going down because Elle's journey is really like a roller coaster ride it's like highs and lows and highs and lows it's the best day ever it's the worst day ever it's the best day ever it's the worst day ever I have an idea to make it the best day ever again you know it's the whole thing is like that while she was having those highs and lows I was connecting with her in deeper ways and I think I transformed as an actress doing the show and I even think like the MTV version that everybody watches of the show we filmed that in September I did 
did this show for another nine months. And I think my shows towards the end were my best shows, not the one that's <laughs> videoed and saved for everybody to see, but I think they were, they were deeper emotionally, they were funnier, I took more chances on the jokes. And um, so it was a lot about learning about my own process doing that show. And I mean, I absolutely love all of the people that I worked with. I have such amazing friends from doing the show. They are, I, in fact, I was talking to Paul Kanan, um, who played Kiki um, in the show today. And I, was, and, and I was talking to the writer of the show today. <laughs> I was talking to both of them today in diff two different occasions for two different reasons. These are my people. So I guess if you can say, and when you look back on your life, you really don't, you don't necessarily look back and go, oh, my life is a collection of all the jobs I had. Even though we live life in a way where we're so job focused and driven, but we don't look back at it like that. We look back at it like these were the feelings I felt. And these were the people I loved. And these were the things that I learned. And so that's kind of how I look at that journey is this is what I learned. These are the people I took and it felt amazing. And, it, and there were highs and lows just like Elle's journey and overall just a lot of joy. I saw a tweet recently that said, I haven't trusted the Tony Awards since Legally Blonde wasn't nominated for Best Musical. <laughs> and I agree. I think, you know, when the show came out, I think a lot of people counted it out. It came out while a lot of movie musicals were coming out, a lot of jukebox musicals were coming out. Uh, kind of just like how Elle was counted out when she first got to Harvard. 100%. But I would say, you know, over time, I think Legally Blonde has become so beloved by the theater community. I'd say it's probably the best, if not the best, film to stage adaptation. And we're seeing right now with the Regent Park's production in London, this beautifully diverse company of performers yeah. telling the story. It's more universal than ever. Uh, what is it like getting to see this show that you worked so, so hard on and helped develop grow and flourish all over the world over the last 15 years? I, I couldn't be more proud. Um, I believe always in life cream rises to the top, right? I believe that about artists who maybe aren't getting their due now, especially young actors who are like, I just want the thing. And I'm like, trust me, cream, cream rises to the top. You will, you will always go up. I said that to Shoshana Bean when she got her Tony nomination. I said, honey, it's been a long time coming, but cream rise always rises to the top. And I think that there's something about Legally Blonde and how it was so much smarter than people thought it was. The lyrics, the book, the music, it was the direction. Everything was smarter than you thought it was, just like Elle was smarter than you thought she was. This, and in that way that was sort of brilliant, all of that, that it was sort of slid by you as it seemed joyful and fun and bubbly, but really there was a big message. And what I love about young people now who have done the show, because it's, a show that a lot of people have done in high school and in their own theaters or even in junior high um, and in elementary school. I actually just saw a hilarious video of like five-year-olds doing it and I, this kid playing Warner, I never laughed so hard. It was the cutest thing I've ever seen. It was so adorable. Um, but so everybody's doing it and realizing how smart it is as they do it. And they realize that the messages in there are so relevant, and especially they're relevant today about young women were stereotyped and young women who believed that their value is in getting a man or in being desirable and yet they're worth so much more than that they are worth they have all this substance and good stuff in their brain and in their hearts and they can do anything and i think this message especially for everybody but especially for women is so relevant today also especially in the me too mo movement we have this moment where Elle is hit on by her boss, she rejects her boss, and she gets fired. This is what we're talking about. This has been going on forever. When the show, when the show happened, everybody was like, eh. Now they're like, oh, well, no, no, time's up on that. And now we're telling this story again. I think this show is, is more relevant and than, than it's ever been. And I think it's due for a revival. Uh, as it, I love that it's happening in the West End. I, and uh, and I really would love to see that production. I think that the show ha can have many different interpretations. I really think, you know, Paulette 
should be someone who's trans. I mean, like how great, exciting, and like, you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. You've done it all. TV, Broadway, film, including your own musical podcast, Women of Tomorrow. You've got a show coming up, a one woman show, Born to Entertain, June 24th at the Hallamdale Theater Company in New Jersey. Other than a leading role in Legally Blonde 3, Mindy Kaling, Please Make This Happen, what's next on your list and are we going to get to see you back on Broadway? Well, there's always a chance now that I live on the East Coast. Uh, it's it's really about juggling a TV schedule too. But I, I have this project called Women of Tomorrow, which is an album, and every song addresses a different issue that women are facing today, um, be it you know equal pay or unattainable beauty standards or obsession with being liked on social media and uh, breaking the glass ceiling, whatever, whatever. Um, and I am turning that into a Broadway musical right now. So that is sort of where my... Uh, my Broadway focus is, is, is developing this uh, with a, a, a really amazing director. And, um, and it's not going to be exactly the album, but the album is the inspiration for it to tell our story uh, as women, our history and how we got to where we are right now and how we can move forward in new empowered ways uh, that represent female equality. My passion for women, uh, I have a foundation, it's Women of Tomorrow Foundation, and we do a lot of work, uh, our artistic work, that is activism. So activism through art, education through art, inter and activism through entertainment. And I really believe that it's easier for people to listen to you um, when it sounds pretty. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, much much easier for people to understand it's like the like we're talking about the me too movement and seeing Elle experience that when we personalize a situation through a character that we love then we begin to see how grave these things are and these issues are and we begin to care about those issues so that's kind of how i i like to work i like to tell a story and make this story connect with your heart so it changes your mind. And then from there, we can work towards changing the social consciousness around uh, our belief that women are inferior to men. We can't wait to see it. Thank you again so much for taking the time to talk with me today and for giving little gay boys everywhere such fierce vocals to lip sync to. But let me tell you, I love all the little gay boys and big gay boys and all the gay boys everywhere. <laughs> I have a piece of clothing or a job or any talent if it wasn't for all the gay boys everywhere. Oh my god. Well, we love you so much, <laughs> Laura <Marvel. laughs> <laughs> have, have an amazing day. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. 100 interviews. I can't believe it. If today was the first episode you saw, welcome. If you've been here from the start, thank you. I need to thank all of my guests who volunteered their time to sit with me and share their stories. It means the world. I've also got to thank Melissa Rose Hirsch for the kick-ass theme song, Ian Johnson for all the promo work, and to Pierre Murray for the video design you see at the beginning and end of each episode. There's more stories to tell. I've got some awesome guests lined up for the rest of this season. Thank you again for supporting me, and I'll see you real soon. Come on and come and play in Kiki's closet today.